Hey, what's going on guys? So we're going to be doing a deck profile on the deck that took second place at YCS Dallas by Alex Reed. So congratulations to him for winning. And it is kind of a deck that we haven't really seen before. So uh, let's get into it. I'm going to do a deck profile. Then we're going to talk about uh, the deck and uh, just give some opinions and thoughts on the deck after we go through the deck profile. So uh, we got one Black Sorcerer Soldier, one Card Trooper, one Chaos Sorcerer, one Dark Armed, one Dark Flare, two Eclipse Wyvern, two Effect Failure, one Aaron, one Gores, one Honest, um, one Jane, one Judgment Dragon, uh, three Light Pulsar, one Luminat, three Lila, two Mystic Tomato, one Phantom of Chaos, one Plague Spreader, two Red as Darkness Metals, two Raiko, one Sangan, one Trigodia. No, uh, for the spells, we have Allure, Charge, Dark Hole, Future Fusion, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, three Solar Recharges, Treacherous Trap Hole. And as far as the side deck, he side decked two Maxis, three Electric Virus. Uh, three Mystical Space Typhoons, another Trigodia, uh, two Royal Decrees, Effect Veiler, uh, Gemini Imps, and two Golds of the Dark World. And as far as extra deck, um, the only tech card I would say that's here, uh, I'll run through them really quick uh, just so you guys get an idea, but uh, interesting that uh, he did have Void Ogre Dragon in his uh, extra deck because uh, he said it was pretty good because he can bring it back with the Red Eyes Darkest Metal, plus it has a relatively decent effect, um, especially because you can banish um, these cards um, from your hand, um, so you know. I mean, there are times where you can kind of just swarm the field and be left with nothing in your hand, and then that way you don't have to worry about dark hole because you have void ogre dragon. So uh, pretty good stuff there. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about his deck. And uh, this is just more my thoughts than anything. But um, you know, personally, I thought dark flare dragon was a, a strange card to run because uh, most insector decks can just OTK, uh, especially when you only have one trap as a back row. And that was also interesting that he also decided just to run one trap as far as his uh, back row. But, I mean, when you do happen to have the combo, which is like Light Pulsar plus Red as Darkness Metal, if once you have Red as Darkness Metal in the graveyard, whenever they get a Light Pulsar, you just get back Red as Darkness Metal. So it forces your opponent to overcommit to the field and use a lot of cards in their hand. And if they don't finish you off, you can kind of capitalize on that. But um, Dark Flood Dragon is pretty decent against Insectors. I mean, if you remove a Hornet, it can be uh, problematic if they don't draw into a Hornet. Uh, soon, but I feel like when you have no back row, I mean, Insectors can really OTK you quite easy, even without the swords. Um, you know, Gigamantis just nets so much field advantage. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. And uh, he also did mention he was playing Mystic Tomato over uh, Tour Guide because he didn't have Tour Guide. So if he did have Tour Guide, keep in mind that he would have played him, uh, which I would agree with just because Tour Guide is good. Although uh, Mystic Tomato is a card that cannot get effect failed, so that is, I guess, one plus to it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a pretty interesting deck. Uh, the card trooper seemed uh, kind of random to me. I personally would have preferred maybe another Raiko, um, just for the ability to destroy problematic cards. Because uh, you know, uh, Dark Worlds is a card that, uh, or a deck that does play Skill Drain. And the thing is, um, sometimes you really need to uh, destroy that field spell early on with a Raiko. That way, you can kind of get around everything. Because you have Red Darkness Metal, which is uh, 28, and Graph is only 27. So if you can destroy the yeah, field spell to where they don't have any field spells anymore, uh, they can find, fall apart qu quite fast because they don't have a way to discard because some aren't running the Trance Archfiend just because, you know, Trance Archfiend is a card where uh, you can't necessarily use drag down as uh, often because you might have Trance Archfiend in your hand, uh, like multiples of those, and it kind of does clog at times. But uh, his side deck was pretty solid, I would say, uh, minus the uh, gold. I wasn't too much of a fan of that. But he said he didn't like playing against Gravekeepers, which, uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, anyone that doesn't like to play Gravekeepers because, uh, you know, I really don't like just getting well tributed. I think that card is really unfair. Um, but Gemini Imps was there as well, and I thought Gemini Imps is just overall more solid versus um, Dark Worlds, I would say. Um, just because it allows the ability to, you know, um, stop the drag down and then you get to draw one. So it really does help quite a bit. Um, but gold is pretty good as well. Um, mostly, I would say gold is better against uh, the uh, Gravekeeper matchup, but yeah. Um, and then he side-decked another Valor, which is interesting. He side-decked the two Maxis because he said he wasn't really afraid of uh, wind-ups too much. Um, but Electric Vice, now this card is pretty interesting. What you do is you uh, send it from your uh, hand to the graveyard, so it's kind of like a hand trap. Uh, and you take control one face-up machine or a dragon monster on your opponent's side of the field until the end of the turn. So what was interesting is he also mentioned uh, that he would uh, take a Lagia there, uh, because Lagia is a dragon there, even though it requires dinosaurs to get it out, which is interesting. 
But um, yeah, and he can uh, attack with it, and then if they have a response, he can just you know detach, and then he can remove it from Red's Darkest Metal because it is a dragon. So that was pretty interesting. You know, I thought that was a pretty good tech. Um, to me, the one Judgment Dragon seemed really random. He did say it was just a total random Judgment Dragon, though. Um, I mean, he he probably always had Lila in the graveyard, but he, it just didn't feel like there was enough Light Sworn to run multiple JD, perhaps. Uh, I personally would have just bumped the Light Sworn count up just a little bit. That way, you were still able to, you know, utilize Judgment Dragon. I think Judgment Dragon is still one of the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! as far as uh, effects, because it is quite an amazing effect. But um, I think that... He had a really good matchup because he said he played seven Dino Rabbits, and um, I could see this deck destroying Dino Rabbits just because everything has huge attack. Um, I mean, if you really need to, Dark Flood Dragon can point for point. Uh, Lagia, I mean, it's at 24, and like Light Pulsar definitely was the key card of his deck though because it was able to run it over, and if they were able to destroy it, uh, you know, uh, by any means you could just get back Red Star Smell and then attack over it and then special summon another Light Pulsar. So, I really felt like Light Pulsar is definitely a very viable card right now. Um, and it was interesting that he, he was playing Phantom of Chaos, which is great. I mean, you can uh, banish Red Eyes Darkest Metal to get back um, Light Pulsar, but then uh, you don't have that target unless you happen to have two Red Eyes Darkest Metals. So, I thought that was an interesting uh, you know, way to play uh, Chaos. Uh, Light, I don't know if you want to call it Chaos Dragons, Light Sworn. It, it seems more like a, a Chaos Dragons to me because, um, you know, there's not very many lights when there's only one Judgment Dragon. But yeah, I could see his uh, reasoning to not main deck Maxi, and he's just playing the two Veilers instead, and that would be due to because Effect Veiler is light, and, uh, you know, Maxi is, uh, you know, once it goes to the graveyard, I mean, it's great, though, um, but if you mill it, you know, it doesn't really have uh, any use in the graveyard. But yeah, it was an interesting deck, and uh, personally, I think this deck, you know, seems like it could be fun. Again, if you put a few... Future Fusion, you are pretty set to win. Although, I was kind of curious why I didn't play three Clips Wyvern, because I feel like if you can uh, Future Fusion and send all three Clips Wyverns to the grave and deck them quite a bit, um, it does help. But, you know, perhaps, you know, this is just how he liked it. He liked the consistency of this. Uh, personally, I just thought Card Trooper was a little bit random. Uh, I, I personally would have played another Light Swan over that. Maybe uh, Garoth, perhaps, just so you can potentially do the Lumina Garoth play, which is still a great play in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but yeah, um, interesting choice also by running Treacherous Trap Pull. If you haven't seen this card before, uh, what it does is you just destroy two monsters on the field. You can destroy your own, your opponent's. And uh, the thing is, when you uh, run Treacherous Trap Pull, um, you can't activate it if you have any trap cards in your graveyard. So basically, when people run Treacherous Trap Pull, that's the only card that they run anyways, uh, as far as traps. But yeah, it is an interesting uh, choice, and it is quite a good card. Uh, just because it is super trainable, and um, you know it, it's good early game, good late game, I'd say. So yeah, I mean, it definitely is a card where you get to plus off of it. And I would say it's actually pretty good against wind-ups as well, because uh, if they go summon, summon another thing, you can just go Treacherous Trap Hole. And uh, it probably worked out pretty good for him as far as uh, doing that. But he said he didn't play wind-ups uh, too often. I believe he said he played one uh, wind-up player. But yeah, this has been the deck profile for Alex Reed's uh, Dragon Sorn or Chaos Dragons, uh, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it was an interesting deck. Um, also, uh, very cool to see a Void Ogre Dragon being used. Uh, I didn't really think this card would be used in anything uh, other than um, Infernities, but you know, I it doesn't require like uh, Fiend or anything, it just requires a Dark Tuner. That's all it requires, which uh, Plague Spreader happens to be. So it looks like that worked out pretty well for him. And uh, also, Scrap Dragon is a great card to uh, make because uh, you can bring it back with Red Eyes Dark to Spell. You can uh, use Scrap Dragon's effect, pop itself, and destroy one, and then bring it back with Red Eyes Dark to Spell and do it once again. And I think that was uh, quite good. And uh, what's good about his deck also, though, which I haven't mentioned yet, is uh, Skill Drain won't hurt that much just because everything has huge attack, as well as Light Pulsar's effect uh, resolving in the graveyard. So if he was playing against Skill Drain Heroes, um, he can get out Ray's Darkest Metal, and they really have very limited answers to that, um, especially when uh, you know Light Pulsar is um, the one bringing it out, because uh, if the Skill Drain isn't on the field, obviously you can just bring it back, but even if the Skill Drain's on the field, you still have a 2800 attacker, which is pretty darn good against E-Heroes, and I think their only answers to that possibly would be like Gemini Spark, maybe some Deep Prisons, but it's not too common to see Deep Prison being played and uh, Skill Drain Heroes at the moment. But yeah, so this is the deck profile. Let me know what you guys think of it, if you'd make any changes. Personally, I'd, I don't like Dark Flare Dragon. I probably would have taken this out. I probably would have taken out the Card Trooper as well, and then uh, bumped more Light Swarms up so I can play more Judgment Dragon, because I feel like Judgment Dragon is too good of a card. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Asianized White Dragon, signing out.